Hello and welcome to Doc Clay's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at reversible reactions and importantly we're going to be looking at dynamic equilibrium and Le Chatelier's principle. So the purpose of today's lesson is going to be able to do the three following things. So first of all we want you to be able to describe a reversible reaction, be able to recall the meaning of dynamic equilibrium and finally be able to, dis to describe the effect on amount of product or yield when the temperature and or pressure are changed. So let's go and have a look at these. So first of all, reversible reactions. Can you remember how we describe a reversible reaction? I'll give you three seconds. Three, two, one. That's right. We use the double-headed arrow. So A and B plus C go to make A, C and B, but those products can also react together and go in the other direction to make the reactants again, the double-headed arrow going to the left. So the double-headed arrow there indicating reversible reaction. We'll remember, of course, that these are our products when we're describing and on the left hand side we've got our reactants like so so having looked at rate uh, reversible reactions we're going to move on and look at what this thing dynamic equilibrium means and we look at an example here that we've talked about before where we have copper sulfate which is hydrated and the reversible reaction that occurs when we heat it. 5H2O. So we have CuSO4 plus 5H2O. So we have hydrated on the left hand side and the hydrated copper sulfate we know is that's right, blue in colour and when we apply heat meaning that this is an endothermic reaction Going to the right, we form what colour? That's right, we form white copper sulphate. And we also have water. Now if it's endothermic, going from left to right, how would we describe the energy change going from right to left? Correct, we'd call that exothermic. So let's imagine then that we've got some copper sulphate crystals which are going to be blue in colour, like my pen, here, in the bottom of a beaker. And we started to heat it. What's going to happen? That's right, we'll keep heating it, and slowly, over time, what's going to happen is water will start coming off, and because there's nothing on top, the water will escape out of the top of the beaker, and in the bottom of the beaker we will start just having white copper sulphate crystals which are now no longer blue. At some point later. So although it's a reversible reaction we drive all the water off and we end up with white copper sulphate in the bottom. Well, let's think for a second what would happen if Instead of having that open to the environment, we had our blue copper sulphate in the bottom. And we put a lid on top of the watch glass, like this, and then we heat again. Well, you're right. What will happen is, as we heat, some of the water will start to come off and head to the top of the beaker and perhaps some of the crystals will start to turn white. But what's going to happen when the water gets to the top? That's right, if the lid is cold then water is going to start to form at the top in droplets and at some point will start to drip back down into the beaker and perhaps start to reform 
some of our white and blue crystals. If we leave that for some time, it will appear that nothing is changing. The reaction is reversible. We have a closed system and we say that the system is in dynamic equilibrium and our definition of dynamic equilibrium which we'll put down here is one in which the reactants and products are reacting in both directions but overall there is no change in concentration so the forward reaction the rate of forward reaction is equal to the rate of backward reaction and there is no change in the concentration of the reactants or products. So it appears as though nothing is happening. So finally in today's lesson what we're going to look at is changing how much product is formed. Sometimes we describe this as the yield of the product and it's also described as shifting equilibrium. So we'll come back to our imaginary reaction here. AB plus C going to make AC plus B. And we're going to say that going from left to right is endothermic. So can you remember what that means in terms of whether it takes in or gives out energy? That's right, it means takes in energy. So it will feel like the temperature goes down, which means a reversible reaction going from products to reactants must be, that's right, exothermic. So the question here is, how can I make more products? So increasing the amount of products. Well, there's two ways I can do this in an equilibrium reaction. You can either change the temperature or you can change the pressure. So let's look at temperature first. So increasing or changing the temperature. For a reaction that's at dynamic equilibrium, an increase in pressure will lead to the equilibrium shifting to oppose the change and if you increase the temperature the opposite of increasing the temperature is to take energy in, so it goes in the endothermic direction. Therefore, goes in endothermic direction. And in our example above, the endothermic direction is from left, that's reactant, to right, towards a product. So an increase in temperature will lead to an increase in products because the equilibrium shifts to oppose a change and we get more products formed. Equally, the opposite we can say is true. If we were to decrease the temperature, the equilibrium shifts to oppose a change and therefore goes in the exothermic direction, which is to the left-hand side. Now, the final one then is what happens if we change the pressure? Well, 
opposing the change, what is the opposite of increasing pressure? That's right, the opposite of increasing pressure is decreasing pressure. So the equilibrium shifts to oppose the change and therefore will go to the side with the least number of molecules. with, I'll just make a bit more room here at the bottom, with fewer molecules, or least molecules, fewer molecules. So if we look at our example above, it's a bit of a bad example actually. We've got one molecule of AB plus one molecule of C. So on the left hand side we've actually got two molecules in total. On the right hand side we've got one molecule of AC and one molecule of B. So on the right hand side we've actually got two molecules. Therefore an increase in pressure in this particular reaction would have no overall effect on the equilibrium. However, if we were to have a look at this next example, where we have NO2 going to N2O4 and N2O4 going to 2NO2. Here's our reversible reaction down the bottom. I'll just highlight that. If we look on the left hand side, we've got two molecules, whereas on the right hand side, we've actually only got one molecule. What that means, if we were to increase the pressure in this example, the, the equilibrium would shift to the side with the fewest molecules and therefore would go towards the right hand side from left to right increasing the amount of product finally remember we'd say increasing the amount of product would be the same as increasing the yield and there we have it we'll have a quick recap of those things that we've seen in today's lesson so today we've seen reversible reactions dynamic equilibrium and the chatelier's principle which is where we look at the shifting in equilibrium. And by the end today, you should be able to describe a reversible reaction, recall the meaning of dynamic equilibrium, and describe the effect on amount of product when the temperature and pressure are changed. See you soon.